on that is you know sometime off in the future when we have 150 employees if I had 150 not employees members <laughs> members of the Academy if I had 150 members of the Academy who behaved exactly like you what kind of Academy would we have would we have one where people are here every single night even when they just finish something they're getting ready for somebody else's stuff and we're all pitching in together and we're working hard everyone's on time everyone's communicating well everything else or will we have people you know who are doing the opposite. So that third piece is, is in the academy, and then the fourth piece is, is outside the walls. You know, it's like that scene when, when they call on Achilles to go fight for the whole army. So who's our warrior? Who's the person we bet on when all the chips are down? So that one this year was very easy. When you only lose twice the entire year when you're competing every weekend, Kevin Satterfield. <laughs> Kevin showed up to the gym about one month after we opened. He walked in the door and he had been sent over by Hamid, who had trained him before, and Hamid is a friend of mine, and, and said, Cody, I think this guy's gonna be a good fit with your gym. And so Kevin walked in the door and he's about six foot three, 330 pounds, just huge guy. And I was like, oh my goodness, here we go. And right off the bat, you know, Kevin was the exact kind of student that you want to have as part of the academy, especially early on, because he constantly wanted to challenge himself, and he constantly wanted to push himself in terms of how quickly he could progress, and how much skill he could acquire, and how many different challenges he could take on. And so right away when we walked in the gym, immediately the conversation was, you know, what's the plan for the two of us in terms of getting him ready to, to start a fight career and to really, you know, look at that long term you know kevin's not someone who's in this as a hobbyist to fight one time and see if he wants to do this I feel like i'm well rounded and i'm in a lot better shape than most all of these heavyweights uh, i'm just looking forward to like smashing guys and watching my teammates win there's gonna be fireworks and i'm looking for like a big finish Kevin's making an amateur debut already with a plan for his amateur career, his pro career, and, and what he's going to do. And so this whole time that the gym's been open, we've been working behind the scenes to get him ready. And so I think when you look at Kevin's skill set in terms of grappling, in terms of his striking, in terms of his understanding of some of the you know, in-between games, between striking and grappling, and some of the cage work and everything else, he's at a really high level for a debut amateur. So now... The big thing that we need for him is to get him that time in the cage, to get him those minutes of work. And so he's going to fight a lot. He's going to be very active in terms of continuing to pursue fights. And so I'm really excited to watch him take all these tools that he's been developing and, and put them to use. I think it's going to be you know, a great fight for him, and I think it's going to be a good time overall. You know, Kevin as a person, he's sneakily hilarious. You know, Kevin will sit there and give you, you know, five or six deadpan answers in a row, 
and then he'll give you this little side eye and then crack a joke and he'll have the whole gym just busting out laughing. So I really like having Kevin around, you know, in terms of that. He's been such a model student in terms of, you know, how he carries himself and everything else. And, and since day one, I think when Kevin came to the gym, he found a home in the way that you hope every student will when they come in. You know, immediately he felt like the gym clicked for him. And so it's been fun to watch the gym influence him, but also him have a really positive influence over the gym. And it's really fun moments for me where I can see new students benefiting from his knowledge. And I see him taking the time after class to sit down with someone who's been training 30 days and work with them on some of the finer details of some of the stuff that, that Kevin's really good at. So I think he's a really great influence on our academy. And I think you know, his fight career is only really going to help push everyone in the gym forward because he's worked so hard to get to this point. So I'm really excited to see him go out and enjoy this experience that he's put in the work. Welcome to another episode of Dirty White Belt Radio. We always aim to bring you the most interesting guests that we can, and usually those folks are going to be prominent in the local martial arts scene as well. We really lucked out in finding Dewan Dirty South Owens because he checks both of those boxes. In addition to being one of the best MMA fighters that North Carolina has produced and a high-level jiu-jitsu competitor as well, Dewan is also one of the more interesting figures in the scene, a former high-level beat. You know, I know prize fighting is not a, you know, you've got a small window and you, you've got to make as much money as you can, make as many contacts as you can. Hopefully, put yourself in a situation where you can, you know, parlay that notoriety into, uh, you know, other other ventures when you when you're done fighting. Man, I'm, I'm putting a lot of work in. Uh, I'm training at uh, Elevate MMA Academy. Uh, I went up to uh, Richmond and uh, training MMA Institute. You know, I got my family up there. I'm also getting some work in at Forest Carry, so I'm just training every aspect of MMA: jujitsu, wrestling, Muay Thai, getting back to my boxing. So uh, this is going to be the best dirty sauce you guys seen. Dewan and I have known each other a long time. At first, we were just, you know, two individual martial artists training at different gyms. He started fighting, you know, way before me and was somebody who early on was starting to put everything together. And, you know, throughout the time that we've really known each other well, we've always had a very close, you know, like peer to peer relationship. And so we've been able to share information and help each other out in terms of achieving our goals, both in our careers as fighters and also in some of the work we're trying to do to spread the martial arts in a positive way. And so he and I have always been able to help each other a lot. I've always been really impressed with Duan as a person as I've gotten to know him and, and getting to realize how much he cares for his family and how much time he puts into helping those around him and, and wants to be an agent for change in a positive way in the world. And so to now have him involved with the gym and to have him be a part of influencing the students of the gym means a lot to me. And I really see a lot of benefit that they derive from seeing his example and just seeing how he is as a person and feeding off that positive energy. Dewan's fighting style is always really exciting. You know, he has a really wide range of techniques standing, and you can see a lot of the influence of both his very traditional Thai style training, but then a lot of capoeira and a lot of his own kind of influence from being a b-boy and everything else that comes out in his style. And so it leads to a lot of unpredictability and a lot of interesting ways that he puts things together that are a little bit different and off rhythm from how people are used to seeing it. And so it definitely gives him an advantage you know, in the cage. I'm really excited because I feel like his skill set has always been there. And so the question for Gamon is where he's at mentally coming into the fight. And I think in the entire time I've known him, this is the best place I've seen him. Going into this fight, Dewan is feeding off a lot of the positive energy that he's creating. And when you look at how he comes back from his trips from Africa and how charged up he is, and then seeing him be around as many new students as he is on a day-to-day -day basis, and I think there's something about the energy of people who are starting out their martial arts journey that help remind more experienced martial artists why they fell in love with this and why it's so special to keep training and pushing yourself every day. So I'm really excited for Dewan to take that energy into this fight and I'm really expecting to see one of his best performances ever in terms of him putting it all together.
going to put on a show. You're going to see some jiu-jitsu, some striking, uh, just a complete MMA fight. From top to bottom, I'm going to dominate him from, from the start of the bell until the ref pulls me. Elevate MMA Academy would like to thank the following sponsors. When Hannah first walked into the gym, she was kind of every coach's dream. She is in incredible shape and she keeps herself that way all the time. Her skill set was already very developed. There wasn't a lot of ground level work that needed to be done. Her coaches who had worked with her before had done a great job and she had done a great job being a dedicated martial artist for just years and years and years. So the first couple times we hit pads, I got really excited knowing that I didn't have to do a lot of the early work and we could immediately move into this refining stage where it's starting to think more about how and why instead of learning techniques and learning what. And so it's been fun to watch her start to pick up new things and incorporate new things and use these tools which she's already had and are so sharp to begin with and see her start developing them in different patterns and in different ways of implementing them. You know, as a person, she's very humble, she's soft-spoken, and always receptive to learn and always wants to get better each and every day. And so it's a really nice energy to be around. In terms of, you know, her effect coming into the academy, it's just funny. I think every member at this point has like a Hannah tall tale that they can tell about seeing her do something in the academy that was shocking for somebody her size and or her disposition, you know, or hearing her talk, tell stories about, you know, breaking down, you know, 200 pound deer or 450 pound pigs. And then her talking about, you know, catching possums by hand and catching raccoons and all the different, you know, stories she has from up on the farm. And so it's become something that's, you know, a running joke in the academy about like, you know, what's your funniest Hannah story. This fight I think is really big for Hannah. She hasn't fought since 2015. So she's coming in off a layoff, but I think the time away has really helped improve her. I think from talking to her, this is the most rested she is coming into a fight. We haven't pushed her, you know, into the red zone a lot. She's been at a good, you know, working pace and she can handle so much volume that she's coming into this fight feeling really fresh. And I think you're going to see the best version of her. I think you're going to see all the stuff that people who have watched her fight before know about. They know about how deadly she is with her elbows. They know about how hard she hits and how hard she kicks and how tough she is. But I think you're going to see a smarter application of all that. And I think for Hannah, you know, this is the beginning step of a big phase of her career where she's done all the work to get to this point and now she's going to really take off and explode. And it's going to be one of those situations where you work years and years and years to become that overnight success. And I think she's going to enjoy a lot of success, you know, in the next year or two of her life as she starts to move up through the ranks. And I think for her, really, you know, the sky's the limit. So I'm excited to be a part of that journey and to continue collaborating with her on that. You can see Dewan and Hannah on May 13th, 2017 at the Kerr Scott Building for Next Level Fight Club. And you can visit www.nextlevelfightclub.com slash tickets for information. Kevin will be making his amateur debut in Fight Lab Promotions FL55 on May 20th. It is at the Mirage in Greensboro, North Carolina. The fight of their lives created and developed by Andrew Verity of Remington Place Productions. Remington Place Productions specializes in wedding videos and commercial cinematography. You can visit RemingtonPlaceProductions.com for more information.
This project was also co-developed with Gene Kim Productions. You can find information at, at Gene Kim Productions and GeneKimPhotography.co. Elevate the LeMay Academy is located at 2945 South Mountain Boulevard, Durham, North Carolina. For more information, visit ElevateLeMayAcademy.com.